More on this conflict, let's speak with Professor Sharam Akhtazadeh. He's a research professor in Middle East and Central Asian politics at Deakin University. He joins us this morning from Melbourne. Professor, um, we've had these confrontations between Israeli forces and Hamas, 2008 to 2009, 2012, 2014. This time, what's different? Well, what's different is that uh, the Israeli government basically feels that it has impunity. It feels that it can uh, really um, overreact and uh, occupy a land um, with no implications, with no uh, expectation of uh, international sanctions. And so in that sense, it's not very different to what's been going on. The difference is the level of violence and the level of the Israeli action. But we could say, perhaps, uh, if you look at the responses so far from within the region, from the United States, for example, uh, how would you read these reactions? There have been suggestions that despite condemnation from some countries in the region, uh, these comments have been less harsh than they have been in the past. And if that is so, why do you think that's so? I think the problem is that the United States, uh, that is uh, the global power, has been a major champion of, the, of Israel. Has, the U.S. has protected Israel in United Nations Security Council, has vetoed systematically uh, all U.N. Security Council efforts to uh, rein in Israeli occupation, Israeli occupation of Palestinian land, which is recognized as illegal. Um, so the U.S. has been systematically pursuing this line. President Biden has also continued that, uh, that line of supporting Israel. The latest examples, of course, when uh, President Biden uh, delayed U.N. security discussion on Israel and, in fact, uh, uh, justified Israeli action, uh, air, um, air, aerial attack, air raids, and um, grand um, attack on Gaza as justified and legitimate. Professor Akhbazadeh, uh, if I could play devil's advocate here, all right, if we look at just what's happened in the last week or so, so clashes between protesters and Israeli police at the Al Aqsa Mosque, Hamas then began firing into Israel with uh, potent rockets, and then Israel then responded with these airstrikes and now artillery attacks as well. If we want to be fair here, Hamas did fire rockets. It need not have done so, and it knows very well that when it does so, Israel will respond even more with greater potency than, than Hamas can ever manage. And who suffers? It will be the people in the Gaza Strip. Hamas knows this, yet it did fire rockets into Israel. What responsibility should they be taking in this latest conflict? I think what we're doing here is that we are buying into the false narrative of, uh, of Hamas's responsibility. Of course, Hamas, uh, Hamas fired rockets on Israeli civilians, and that's abhorrent. But Hamas is not the main party here. Hamas is reacting. The issue here is Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands. The issue here is that the United Nations, all international bodies have called the occupation of uh, Palestinian lands as illegal. They have called for Israel to uh, go towards a two-state solution. Israel has systematically uh, ignored those calls for a two-state solution. Israel has uh, moved population into the occupied territories, established settlements in the occupied territories. The latest news is the eviction of Palestinian families. Is in East Jerusalem, which again undermines the ability of uh, Palestinians to have a state, uh, and then um, raided Al-Aqsa Mosque while uh, the congregation was praying. So all these, uh, the occupation, decades of occupation, and uh, intimidation of Palestinian uh, population has put us in this situation where Hamas lashes out. So you have to think about the context of the, of the conflict, and that it's not really a, a conflict between two equal parties. Israel is the occupying state, occupying power, and has responsibility that it needs, uh, needs to respect. Uh, Professor, uh, moving on very slightly, there are suggestions that this time the conflict, not just on the, in Gaza, 
or in Israel. It's also, or rather, the conflict is within Israel. You're seeing deep rifts opening up within uh, Arab, uh, Arab citizens, in Arab Israeli citizens, as well as uh, confrontations in the West Bank not seen since 2017. Uh, do these, the two fronts opening up in the West Bank and within Israel itself, do you think these are significant developments? This is a major development because Israel has been, again, systematically uh, undermining, marginalizing its Arab population. Um, Israel sees itself not as a democracy, but as a Jewish state. And as a Jewish state, there is very little room for its Arab population, for the Muslim or Christian population. So uh, this, is, uh, this is really pushing Israel to a critical stage. Well, thanks so much for all that, Professor Sharam Akbazadeh from Deakin University, speaking to us there from Melbourne.